Yes, there is. There is a wave energy conversion device that's actually in its later stages of de development called Palamis. And it's like this long snake thing that uh, has hinges at like a whole bunch of corners. So it can move in any direction. And when it moves, that's what creates energy. So that one is really efficient because it does harness more than one degree of freedom. However, we didn't choose to focus on those because it takes a lot of resources and time and we weren't sure that we would be able to make it work. So instead we chose devices that we thought we could actually build like on a feasible scale. Any okay. other questions? Um, you may not know, but if when you take a device that can um, you know, take advantage of what you're doing motion, are you talking about a two times energy increase or is it you know, exponentially less? Sorry, could you rephrase that question? Um, you s basically, with both the devices you built, you got about, what, 0.3 volts out of each one. Now, if you were to build a device that took um, control, not to, I mean, took advantage of two degrees of movement, would it give you maybe 0.6 volts, or be you know, around 0.5? Would it double every time you increase, you know, the amount of degrees it would take advantage of, or is it next one you guys? Yeah, so we're not actually sure about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Should take a look at that. That would be interesting to research. So that could also go in our further steps. Any other questions? Hi, um, I'm just wondering if you've uh, yet had time to consider the fact that um, sometimes these wave hubs have uh, an impact on the environment in terms of you were talking about the North Shore and um, how that might uh, contrast with your or, or impact your surfing community's accessibility to the North Shore and sometimes wave turbines uh, can impact local sort of fish stocks as well with the noise that they make. I wonder if you've had time to consider those uh, impacts yet. Yeah, actually, when we were researching at the beginning, um, Mr. Seki from the Hawaiian Electric Company told us that wave energy hasn't actually got garnered a real start in Hawaii because there are so many local, I don't know, community, community protesters who don't want that kind of stuff right offshore. And so that has um, barred wave energy from really getting its start. So that may be a problem in the future. However, I think that with more research and optimization, they could possibly find a way to make it blend into the environment and over time maybe make less noise so that the fish aren't scared away. Are there any more questions? Uh, now could we have the comments from our wonderful commentators? <laughs> well, thank you very much. That's another very clear presentation. I like the way you worked very well as a team. You clearly practiced that. I was quite tempted to come and join you at one stage, but uh, moving on. I'm from the UK, the very um, southwest of the UK, and we're surrounded by the sea. And we've only just started to use or to research this sort of technology ourselves. So you're well ahead of us, so well done. Um, one question in Cornwall, where we're from, um, seaweed is a big problem. Do you see seaweed impact your new technology? Probably. There is really no seaweed in, in Hawaii, where we live. So that's not a big impact for us when we were researching. But I could see that as a barrier, because the, especially the turbine would get caught in the sea. So maybe further out shore. Well, if, you, if you come to Camborne next, um, for the next science fair, I'll show you plenty of seaweed. <laughs> okay. Just a couple, of, again, quick comments. Number one, I, I uh, focusing on your presentation, uh, I think your teamwork, again, was, uh, as for the first group, I mean, there are certainly challenges when you have a, a, a group of two, and in your case, a group of five, and those are such important skills uh, to, 
to uh, have an opportunity to display. You, you guys are just perfect. You're just, uh, uh, and, and even how you're answering the questions and responding, it's, uh, it's certainly you demonstrate that you are a team and that you have collaborated on the, on, on the whole process. The other, the other aspect is I, I really like models. I, I think it's something that's really missing in, in a lot of research is that you're looking at technology, you look at computers to generate all your information without actually creating something. And in our guest speaker yesterday he talked about the importance of, of creating your own model, your own prototype. Because you can, you can sense things that you cannot see. A, a computer can't tell you that. Technology tools can't tell you other than you doing it. So I think those are so brilliant to be, uh, to be able to have an opportunity to do. Uh, two questions then. In, in the sense of a bobber, what are the, uh, uh, you talk about, I mean, like wave motion and that, but uh, are there optimum wave sizes in the sense of uh, what would be the optimum or the, uh, a point where it's actually detrimental to the device? Well, what we found is that our bobber and our turbine worked better in different kinds of waves. And we were actually there for a three hour period. So we got to experience um, different kinds of waves that were higher, some that were lower, some that were farther apart. And so we found that our bobber needs time to come back down because of the weight to produce more energy. So a longer wavelength is actually better for our bobber. Um, oh yeah, and it obviously can't be bigger than this, so, yeah. Uh, if, if you were to take that to a manufactured scale though, would you see the wave, uh, uh, you know, and I'll just use some very generic terms, like so you have nice low cresting waves or you have these big pounding waves, uh, obviously you're not going to put it on shore because it just wouldn't be efficient, but in the sense of, you know, you might think, oh, the bigger the wave, you know, the uh, the, the greater power output that you'll have. Uh, do you see sort of a limitation? Uh, is there an optimum size? If you were manufacturing this to actually commercialize, what, what, what do you feel uh, the ideal conditions would be? Well, it all depends on where it would be placed because, as you know, different places have different tides and um, tidal heights and stuff. So, it would, I guess it would have to be personalized, sort of, to the area it would be placed in. But, I, I'd say for Oahu, it would be about, well, uh, where the big waves are on Oahu, I would say it would be about Six, six feet, six feet high. And one last question, here you are, I mean, when, when you look at feeding into the grid, obviously you're producing power for use, whether it be for residential, commercial, it could be just for something in a, in a navigational device out uh, that, you know, and you could do just typically, it's replacing something as such as solar or other conventional forms of energy production. Uh, but if, if you're producing energy, and now you have to get it to a grid which is onshore. Uh, what type of challenges would you face, or how would you see that being resolved? So actually, uh, in on Oahu, on one of our marine bases, they actually have had to do it. Like a lot of like initial capital is needed to actually place the cable in the water because it needs to be like special, right? Because it's salt water, especially. But once it's there, it's uh, you don't really need that much. Like, you just have to hook it up. So, just the initial investment will probably be the biggest, and just trying to get it out there at, at first. Does that answer? Yeah, thanks very much for the presentation. I uh, particularly liked the um, the uh, six directions of uh, waves. Um, I could have actually handled a few more seconds of that because I was just, what are they doing? Oh, now I understand. So that was fantastic. Um, look, I really appreciated uh, your research on uh, using very small waves, um, capturing uh, the energy of very small movements. You talked a lot about uh, 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 
uh, waves produced by wind energy and uh, just in the question and answer session you put more emphasis on uh, tidal uh, waves produced by tidal movements, the water, move, water uh, movements uh, as a result of tides. Actually, um, our turbine uses current, the current of the waves, yeah. and our bobber needs a high frequency but a little bit longer wavelength, so there can't be tides and then come back down after like six hours because that wouldn't produce as much energy as a bunch of little oscillating waves. So. But for the, for the heat pump, but for the turbine, the, the tidal um, waves would be great because it would cause so much current going in. Um, maybe 30 minutes, it would not really have any, and then it would have maybe like three hours of coming back out again. Yeah. The other thing I like about your presentation is that, uh, that it's, it's appropriate for countries with large populations along uh, big coastlines, and it's certainly relevant to Australia, where most of our population uh, is hugging the coastline. So, uh, that, was, uh, that was really important. And again, I'd just like to say the confidence that you put into your presentation uh, really made uh, it easy to understand, and, and thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you very much.